Hi guys. I actually have a special guest to introduce to you guys today. And I'm going to butcher her name. I didn't actually say it before, but I think it's Tangela, how you say your name? Uh, perfect. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, would you take a moment and introduce yourself? Who are you? What are you about? Okay. I am Tangela Morris. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am a recovery and empowerment specialist here. And I work with um, victims of trauma. Trauma could be sexual abuse, physical abuse, and any other uh, traumas, past hurts and pains. And I work with them to overcome their trauma. Okay. And is there a trauma that you work most with? Right now, I'm working mostly with women who are substance abusers, who have really heavy pasts, may have been um, um, sexual. Most of them have been sexually abused okay. or physically abused. Right. And you you actually have a book can you say a few more few words about that yes the book i have is called no more victim i want the victory we're actually launching it february 18th so in two weeks but we do have some pre-orders and we've been promoting it and um the the book is directed towards trauma victims and the focus is for them to really um, use the practical information in the book to overcome their past hurts and pain Okay. And if you guys want to check out that book, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can click on that, see if it's, in, if it interests you link in the description. So if a person needs support, what is the best way for them to get help? I believe that first that they need to acknowledge that they need help. Sometimes people have a very difficult time acknowledging that they need help. But um, once they get past that part, or if somebody that um, a family member or a loved one that can help them, the first thing to do is I think is to um, call their local, um, they may have like what well, we have here, like a community service board or even the hospital, or we have like 1-800 numbers where people can call and say, hey, you know, I'm, I, I'm a victim or even I'm feeling depressed and something's going on and I need some help. What type of environments might be traumatic that a person might not initially consider? Um, well, growing, working with children and adolescents, I think that just as an example, this is one example of many, but um, one thing that I noticed is that a lot of parents or mothers, and maybe single mothers, sometimes they bring their kids around people who they don't really know that well, and they think that that person is safe, and it, that person ends up being the one who hurts their child later on. And so it's really, I think, about who you bring around people, your family and friends. And then, of course, when we're talking about adults, certain environments, certain atmospheres, people who, I mean, drugs is just rampant. And one of those things, a lot of, you know, people, I don't know if they realize that people still slip stuff in your drink. They still will give you stuff that will wipe you out and will rape you or will molest you and you're not coherent enough because you've taken something that is, you know, pretty much knocked you out. Yeah. Scary. It absolutely. It absolutely oh my is. My God. So can you walk us through the process of how a counselor might assist a client? Um, so usually what we do is we'll have an intake. So once they come in first day into the office, usually that's like they're at their most breaking point. And so we'll have an intake, just kind of ask them a little bit of background questions and just see what's going on. And usually for me, I like to go ahead and ask, have you had any traumas? Let me go ahead and get that question on the forefront. So uh, most people, they don't lie about that. They may not tell you what it is, but they don't lie about that. So once we get that intake and get them comfortable with what's going on, then we'll set up another uh, session with them so that then they can come in and get the services started. And that way we can really kind of ease into them. So most of the time, we're not just automatically going to say, okay, tell us about what happened to you and tell us how you felt. It's a very easing process because as counselors, we have to develop a therapeutic relationship with people who are trying to share something that's really detrimental to them and really, really difficult for them to share. Can someone truly be an overcomer? And does that trauma necessarily have to affect the rest of their lives? Well, I definitely believe that someone can be an overcomer. And you'll find that in my book. No more victim, I want the victory. And the part that says I want the victory is a part that talks about 
being an overcomer. And what that looks like is somebody who no longer feels like they're in bondage. You know, there's trust issues, there's lack of forgiveness, there's reliving the trauma, staying stuck in the past. And when we're talking about an overcomer, we're, we're saying no longer allowing whatever happened in the past in the past to affect your present and your future. So absolutely somebody can truly overcome that and be able to live a life that was probably initially designed for them to live in the first place. Okay. And I know this question wasn't wasn't prepared, but if someone doesn't overcome, is there like something like there's something wrong with me? Like I haven't overcome this. I'm this been 20 years or 30 years or whatever, and I I'm still dealing with this crap, and I don't know why I haven't overcome it. When other people seem to be fine, they got better. They don't know why I'm not better because they live the same thing and they're fine, and I'm not. So, you know how do, how how do you kind of respond to someone that feels like there's something they aren't doing right? Is it something like a step they didn't take necessarily, let's say, um, that they should have taken? Or is it just because some people are different or whatever? I think that it's definitely because people are different. Everybody's process, even in this process, is um, different. And one thing that, you know, sometimes we want to try to have that step by step. Okay, let me do this first and then let me do that. But this journey to healing, I think, it's really more of a healing process and a recovery and a restoration process for people is really about their own journey in life. You know, as we, we all grow, but we all grow at different paces. And so there should be no rush on it. You know, um, I think that sometimes people do get stuck and that's what the victim part comes in at because everybody that experienced trauma is not necessarily a victim. So a victim, in my mind, this is just how I describe it. The victim part comes when you're staying stuck in that past and you can't seem to get through it or get over it. And, and, and when I say get over it, I don't mean like, oh, just get over it, you know, kind of thing. I'm really saying like, you know, really moving past it to the point where you feel a lot healthier, you feel restored, and you feel like you can move on in life. But that journey takes time, it takes patience, it takes pushing through the pain, and it takes realizing there are choices in life, whereas something prior to that made you feel like you didn't have choices of your own. So thank you so much for answering these questions for me, for everyone. And remember, guys, if you want to check out Tangela's book, it is in the description. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it.